Finally, we are ready to calculate the expected yields of products that you get formed from monochlorination and monobromination. I'm going to walk you through the process of doing this. In the previous video, I showed you the derivation of the relative rates of monobromination and monochlorination. And you won't have to do that in future assignments, but you're going to use that information to calculate the percentages of monochlorination and monobromination products. So we're going to start with monochlorination. And right here I have a different molecule. We still have to do what we did in the previous video, and that is we have to identify each unique carbon that's present in the molecule, and specifically each unique carbon that has a hydrogen bound to it. So looking at this molecule, what you will realize is that this carbon is one type of carbon, that one is another one, and this one is another one. Uh, now looking carefully at this, A is equivalent not only for this carbon, but also for that one, because this carbon, the CH3 and that CH3, they're both bound to the same CH, so equivalent. But over here, if you look carefully, that CH3 and this CH3 are also bound to another CH. And this molecule happens to have a mirror plane passing through it. So these CH3s are equivalent to the CH3s on the left side. So all four of those CH3s, uh, CH3s are the same thing. And by the same logic, you know, having this mirror plane present in here means that this CH is equivalent to that CH. And finally, the CH2 is unique in the entire molecule, period. So we only have three potential products that we're going to generate. And we're going to do this for the chlorination. We're going to do this for the bromination. And we have to keep in mind the ratios, the relative rates that we just calculated. One for primary, 2.5 for secondary, four for tertiary in the event of chlorination, 183 and 1659 for, in the case of bromination. All right, so I'm going to start with A. A is a primary type of carbon because it's only connected to one other carbon. There are a total of 12 type A hydrogens, right? You have three over here, you have three over there, three down here, and three more over there, so 12 altogether. So these are the 12 primary hydrogens. Now for every primary hydrogen, the rate of chlorination is one, as you can see in the table here. So I'm basically using this as a straight out conversion. Type of uh, hydrogen is multiplied by its relative rate. And this tells us that, okay, this is 12, okay, so far so good. We do the same thing with type B. Now, type B is a tertiary carbon, and we have two total hydrogens of type B in the molecule. So we're going to multiply those two molecules, which are tertiary, by the relative rate of tertiary hydrogen. So I'm just using this as a conversion, right? The tertiary hydrogens react four times as fast than primary. So this will end up giving us a value of eight. Type C, this is a secondary um, carbon, and we only have two H's on that carbon. So two secondary hydrogens react by a relative rate of 2.5. So multiplying that together gives us five. Okay, now finally, what we do is, now that we have the relative rates in consideration with the amount of hydrogens of each type that we have, uh, all we have to do is add these numbers together. 12 plus 8 plus 5 is 25. And that's the total. That's the total relative rate of the entire thing. So, what we do is we simply say, okay, well, the relative rate of A was 12. So divide 12 by 25, which is the total, and multiply by 100. That tells you the percentage, 48%. Take the relative rate of B divided by the total, 25, and multiply by 100. This gives us 32. And for C, take the relative rate, 5, divided by the total, which is the sum, so 25, and multiply by 100, you get 20. And so now that you know those values, 48, 32, and 20, we can draw the products. But before we do that, let's look at the bromination. For the primary hydrogens, we have 12 of, of those. But primary hydrogens, you know, the relative rate is only one, so you get 12. 
for type B, which is a tertiary hydrogen, we have two of them. And for every tertiary, the rate is 1659. So we're going to multiply the two tertiary hydrogens by 1659, and we're going to get 3318. For the secondary hydrogens, the type C hydrogens, there's only two of them. We multiply that by a relative rate of 83, which is corresponding of a secondary CH bond in bromination. And we're going to get 166. If we add all of these values together, we get 34.96 as the total value. And like what we did for the chlorination, we divide the individual value, 12, 33, 18, and 166 by 34.96 and multiply by 100. And what you find out is that by far, the tertiary CH is what predominates this reaction. That is the majority of the product you're going to generate. The 94.9%, you know, that's that's really good. That's almost, you know, entirely pure product, right? You, you have a little less than 5% of the secondary product and less than 1% of the primary. Uh, so this should be easy to separate and get a relatively good yield on that specific product. Now compare that to the monochlorination. Uh, yeah, the tertiary is definitely uh, benefited the most. So if you are trying to make a tertiary product, this will be the way to make it via bromination. If you're trying to get a relatively good amount of primary or secondary, then you probably want to go via chlorination. Okay, so that concludes this lecture series. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. There was a lot of information, so just make sure to, you know, watch these videos um, maybe a few more times just to get the idea of the whole process. Uh, but in the next set of videos, we're going to start talking about substitution reactions. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye.